Hello, this is Jan from Red Toad Art Studio and today we are going to do an abstract project using the straight lines that we learned how to draw in our last two videos. You will need some paper. With this one it does depend on what media you're going to use. If you're going to use crayons or colored pencils plain old copy paper will work if you wish. Or go on up to the mixed media paper and then you could use markers or watercolors if you like. Or you know you can use watercolor paper if you like. So really this is your choice today. Let me show you a quick example of what we're going to be working on. Right here. Isn't that cute? And it's very simple. It's a great beginner's art project that you'll have a lot of fun with. It's very relaxing. It's fun, but not too hard. Now this is a fairly good sized page. I think this is about a 9 by 11, something like that. It's in my uh, art book. But, you know, when you're starting a new project or a new technique, I'd advise you to just start with a small piece of paper. Do a small project first and get a feel for it before you move on to the larger project. So, if you have your piece of paper, and I would say if you have markers in the house, use markers. The markers are very fun for this one. Um, you could use any kind of marker, but again, as I say, you could also use your crayons or your colored pencils. So let me move these out of the way. Keep a black felt tip pen for the first step. And I use a Sharpie. These are all Sharpies, but any brand will work for this. Let's lay these over out of the way. So, some people and that includes me sometimes will be tempted to use a ruler but let's let's leave the ruler in the drawer okay um, let's learn how to draw our straight lines freehand and I think one of the secrets of drawing freehand is to watch what you're doing watch that line you're drawing so often we'll just start out and do this and then we look to see if we got it straight after we made the line and when you're using ink you're not going to change that now if you're using pencil you could erase it and try again and try again but let's slow down and just look at where the tip of your pen or your pencil is and watch that line and when it starts to go a little crooked you can change it right off so the idea is slow like a turtle not quick like a rabbit so let's try a line going across this way. And it won't be perfect, at least when I'm drawing it, but it will be good enough. So I'm going to start right here, and I'm going to watch my line being made. Now if you notice, I'm not moving my hand. I'm doing this from my elbow. So that's a fairly straight line. Now, when I'm talking, I tend to wiggle more than if I just shut up and draw my line. Now, I went from side to side. Another way you can do that is to pull it towards yourself. Now, look, I'm not doing this. If I do this, I have a series of little lines. They're okay, but they're better this way. I'm moving my whole arm, and this is staying still. I'm not doing this. It's like it's a um, like it's mechanical almost. So I'm going to put my pin down and then I'm going to move my whole arm straight down as much as I can and watch your line little crooked but not too bad I think maybe I need more practice too and when I talk I really tend to go crooked so I can turn my paper now and do the same thing in fact I'm going to get my sleeve out of the road here have room to go all the way down and now just move your whole arm it's 
see I know that took a while but that's a decent line I got a little off there sometimes just breathing will make you go off <laughs> so now we're going to do the same thing over here patience required And I'll finish that little line there. Now, patience is a magic word for most art. You need to have patience or you need to develop patience, unfortunately, because a lot of us don't have it. Now, if you did our um, Christmas project, you did something like this already. And we also divide it into sections, which is what we want to do here. We want to divide it into sections. I have a partial one down here. And you notice how I had a lot of sections? So that's what we want to do. And you do it your way. Wherever you want to start a line and draw across, you do it. Don't worry about doing it where I've done it. Use the same method if you can. I mean, use your whole arm and draw as straight as you can. Let's draw one across. Now, don't get upset if your line comes out crooked. We're learning right now. And actually, you probably won't even notice that it was crooked when you're done with the project. In fact, you don't have to go from side to side. We could just divide from one line to another. Let's do one here. How's that coming? One here, and there we have a teeny tiny spot. <laughs> I think I'll divide this one and call it good. And I am going to start out by adding my stitches around the outside edge. Just all the way around. There we go. We've stitched around the outside edges just like we were making something out of fabric. Now is the time to get your other markers out and choose a nice bright color here. I'm going to choose a red. Can't get much brighter than red, can you? Where should we start? Let's start right here. And what I want to do is draw. I'm just going to start out easy. I'm going to draw straight lines just like that they don't have to be perfect believe me they're not perfect on my other picture and no one notices it I don't think maybe they just don't tell me right now I like to make up some rules for when I do this and I have a rule when I do mine I have to do at least two segments with the same color and the same pattern so let's see where could I do another red I think right here would be another good red don't you Now take your time with this. I usually try to hurry a little bit when I'm doing a video so it doesn't take you forever to see how to do it all. Time to choose another color. Something that is a different will contrast. I think I'll go a blue. Now I want to do my lines a little different. And how can you do lines different? One way to do lines different is to... Um, like do one skinny line and one fat line one skinny line one fat line or you could do two skinny lines one fat line or you could do three skinny lines and two fat lines just think of a pattern so on this one I'm going to do a fat line and it's, when you use the markers that's where it's nice because you can make your fatter lines pretty easy with a marker so there's me a fat line in blue Alright, see how that changed the look by doing the lines 
fairly far apart, fat, thin, fat, thin. Now, to follow my rule, I have to find another one, and I think I'll do it right here with the same pattern. So, fat. Thin. Let's see, I'm going back here and fatten this up a little again. And then another fat. I've used these markers a lot, and they may be getting a little dry on me. And then a thin. And then a fat. And then it's in. And you know, I'm kind of thinking we need the edge of a fat here. Here we go. Time to change colors. Let's do, how about this? This, I'm not sure the name of it. Sharpies don't give names to their colors. Kind of a peachy color. Let's do that right here. Now I need to change this. So I'm going to do two thins in a fat. Let's see how that works. And maybe a little closer together on this one. Two thins and a fat. Two thins and a fat. And that wasn't a very straight line, but you know what? That's absolutely okay. Two thins. Two squiggly thins, huh? And a fat. And I think I'll only get one thin in. There we go. So now I have to find another place to put that. And I think right up here. Two thins and a fat. Two thins and a fat. Two thins and a fat. And two thins. There we go. Now, I did fatter ones here than there, but that's all right. I can break that rule, right? Time to change to another color. Let's do a purple. Let's do two fats and a thin. And another fat. We didn't have much room to do a very big pattern, did we? And let's see, let's say that the edge of that fat, next fat, shows right down here. Alrighty, now I need to find another spot. Well, let's do this big one here. Two fats. Let's see how let's do it this way. And a thin. Two fats. And a thin. There we go. We've got our purple ones in there. Starting to look neat, isn't it? It's right here. Time to switch colors. What should we... Oh, I think we need a nice bright green. What do you think? Let's do a green right here. So to kind of contrast, I'm going to go this way. And I'm going to do... What should we do? How about three thins and a fat? You notice I'm not worried too much whether my, these lines are a little squiggly or not. 
Now you can get a lot pickier if you'd like when you have a lot of time to do it. And let's do three more things. And there would be a fat starting right down here in this corner. There we go. So we need to do another one. And I'm trying to have them not be right next to another one. I don't want to do another green here or green here. So we're going to move up here and do greens. Actually, it's a little better to do your lines a little closer together so you can get more of the pattern in. All right. What else? What could we use now? My goodness. Oh, I think we should do a pink. Let's do a pink. What can we do now? Maybe two fat lines. Let's see. Did we do two fat lines? Yes, we did. Three fat lines, only we'll make them a little smaller than our other fat lines. There's three fat lines with a single. One, two, three, and a single. And now let's skip over here. We don't want our last two to be next to each other. So we better do this one a pink, which was three fats and a single. Maybe we should say kind of medium large, huh? Single and then a fat and just the tail end of the fat there, or the middle part of the fat. There we go. We've got the pinks. We just have two more plus that little guy right there. So what color would look good there? Let's do a kind of a turquoisey color. We'll go back to a single and a fat. There we go, and then we need to do that over here. Let's do these across like this. There we go. And I, this is awful little. Just, just find something we can put like a single line in it. What can we use? Here's a. Well, we need to um, contrast a little bit. Let's use. I think this is a plummy color. We'll just put two little lines in there. There we go. And it is finished. It's time to sign it down here and date it. I hope you have enjoyed today's project and I would suggest you just try all different kinds of designs and lines and have fun with it. Don't worry about mistakes. Just have fun. Well, I will see you in our next video and I hope you have a fantastic art day today. Bye-bye.